I was thinking of a lot of times, like the founding people aren't around to see it. Uh, so these guys decided to quit me just for what I was Thank you so much. All right, well, look, I'm, I'm a teacher, really, and I like. My job is to bring people information that you would not have even heard of yet. It's like when we first started marijuana. Nobody had gotten the idea that you could do mass rallies. That this was really something that would be a, should be addressed through a civil rights movement. We did the first spoke-ins. And the smoke-in was actually the main uh, expression of it for many years. And uh, the streets, the people in the suits, the people in normal said, well, you can't go out and just, like, be in people's face. You can't have that 15-year-old over there smoking the bomb because you're going to get us all in trouble and, you know, we're corrupting minors. So they were against marijuana smokers coming out in the same way every other group came out. And actually, it was an interesting story. Now, this is a story I should really tell you because it has to do with Richard Nixon. And Richard Nixon, of course, did the first big war on marijuana after Anslinger was fired by the Kennedys. Because you see, John Kennedy was a pot smoker who took LSD. But that's a different story. The story I'm here to tell you about is a man who got in in 1968. And all of a sudden, all over America, marijuana disappeared. It took about a year, but they had this thing called Operation Intercept. And by the end of 1969, there was no pot, but there was beginning to be a lot of Vietnamese heroin. This was very suspicious to us in the marijuana movement. So we called uh, for a uh, smoking. On the show, 4th of July, it was an innocent enough thing, it was kind of a peace demonstration, but Richard Nixon called his own event for exactly the same time to drown our event out. He called it Honor America Day. <laughs> and we announced that we were going to have people uh, to try to defuse what we thought could be potentially a, a confrontation you know, fisticuffs, you know, like Trump Trump supporters who decide to punch you out, kind of thing. So, it got on national television, it got big, and they had this group of people at the head of the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool in the Honor America Day. It was very hot, they were all dressed in heavy clothes. And we were all dressed in, like, shorts, you know. And we couldn't get at them, so people dived into the reflecting field and marched right up to where they were doing their thing, chanting, one, two, three, four, we don't want your fucking war. And see, this was right after Kent State. And everybody said, you're not going to be able to get away with this, but we do. Anyway. So, Richard Nixon was obsessed, he was like a bubble Trump. He was obsessed with the idea that George McGovern had sent us. So he broke into the, the Democratic Party headquarters trying to find proof of that. And it, it, there was Watergate and the impeachment. You all, all know how that turns out, right? Turned out great. Well, anyway, come to, you know, being under Jimmy Carter, we thought we were going to have marijuana be legal in 18 months. It was like now, right? With Chuck Schumer being here, he's got a Boers Act. And I hope it gets through. Because Bernie Sanders pointed out there's a, actually something in the Controlled Substances Act that Richard Nixon left for himself to be able to emergency deschedule any drug. Right? And that was because marijuana had a commission called the Schaefer Commission, and the Schaefer Commission hadn't come out yet. So they put the clause in the Controlled Substances Act, which is still there, 
that the president can order the attorney general to deschedule any drug. And Bernie said he would do it five minutes after he got into the White House. So the Republican, the Democrats promised us, if you let us elect Biden, because we really got to stop Trump, and I really, I agree, we really got to stop Trump, we will fraud march Joe Biden in to sign the bill. That's what they said. And, you know, that is the situation we're at now, and I do not understand exactly why Chuck Schumer didn't talk very much about what's happening in the Senate. I'm very much, I'm very concerned. There's a lady from uh, New Hampshire named Jean Shaheen. She's also in the news lately because she's very concerned about the United States withdrawing from Afghanistan. And she says that we can't legalize pot until we deal with the opiate crisis first. And you know, they're never gonna, never gonna totally solve that. So that's like saying, we're never gonna legalize pot, right? Well, we have a letter just to get people like Carol Maloney and Chuck Schumer to send to the president ordering him to, or imploring him, actually, ordering or to order the Attorney General to deschedule Ibogaine. This, I, I'm sure many of you know about Ibogaine. Unfortunately, most people in this country never heard about it. This is one of the other things that this organization and this march has been working on. We have a cure for drugs. And in case you don't know, 30 minutes after you take your Ibogaine in the morning, your heroin withdrawal completely goes away and never comes back. We have the cure for methamphetamine. We have the cure for cocaine. It works for alcohol and tobacco. It's an equal uh, opportunity. Uh, Addiction interrupter, uh, one third of all the people who did it for heroin found out that they put down, just put down cigarettes. Well, so, this happens to be from an African sacred plant. And it's like knowledge that was been stolen from African Americans that there's this plant from Africa that can cure everybody of heroin addiction. So, we're going to need a little help here getting this across because we're going to ask Schumer to get Jean Shaheen to co-sign the letter to Joe Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland asking them how Ibogaine could be Schedule 1. Not because it's a miracle cure, because it's easy to be a miracle cure and be banned. Marijuana is a miracle cure. It was banned for a long time. No, it's Schedule 1 because people actually do not want to take it. If you take too much, it makes your car sick. Uh, actually, the amount you have to take to get off heroin, it's only compared to heroin withdrawal, which is one of the worst things in the world, that it's kind of tolerable. But there are people, there's no Ibogaine spots on the corner. This is not a drug in commerce. Drugs. This is not fair. So how could it ever have been Schedule 1? It's supposed to have a high potential for abuse. And, you know, I have a friend named Randy Critico. You know him? He brought Roger Stone to my place while I was in prison. Uh, and, you know, this cool. But later I, I asked Roger Stone, look, could you just add, tell Donald Trump? Because I would tell anybody, I would tell any of me, right, look, there's a cure for heroin. Maybe somebody in your rep do, you know. So, uh, we told Donald Trump, and of course, he wasn't interested. Because the guy is actually only interested in, I don't even, I can't even figure that guy out. I will say one thing. What happened on January 6th 
was a fascist putsch. It was equivalent to the beer hall putsch. And there's a lot of marijuana people in the anti-vaxxer group who are kind of supporting Donald Trump. And I will say that I believe we can get marijuana without having to compromise with the devil. You know? No Cook Brothers! But um, we got a lot of Republicans who are pro-marijuana now. And they would just run John Boehner for president. I'm sure he would beat Trump in a minute. He's much more personable, okay? So they don't have to pick like an outright Nazi for president. He is running, you know. And if Biden doesn't legalize pot, it's going to be very bad. It's like when, right before the election, Hillary Clinton wouldn't really come out for legalizing pot. She says, we're going to make it Schedule 2. Schedule 2 is like cocaine and methamphetamine. It's really illegal. You go to jail for a long time. So, you know, that was not what people wanted to hear. And a lot of people voted for Derek Johnson, and then a lot of them became Trump supporters. So we're going to have to somehow get those guys over to us when... Right now, they're kind of... They really believe that Donald Trump is still president. You, you guys all know about QAnon, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah Fuck QAnon. These, these people are completely nuts, insane. They're insane. So anyway, you can help. I I'm just you know like a, a survivor, but I I've been around for 50 years and I've seen it come true. So I know that we can do more. And the thing is, while I was waiting for marijuana to become legalized, we developed a lot of other really great ideas. So now we can work on them. And I hope that you'll come. We're going to have a table later. We're going to do joints for jams again. If you, if you did your vaccination duty, then you get a free job. So... Stay tuned, stay with the movement. I, I'm on the ACT UP meeting every Monday night at the drug user rep. And uh, I'm reachable uh, through Troy or Bloom or any of the people. And a lot of people just know me. Uh, we're supposed to get a new building for the city. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Otherwise, I'm going to be homeless. Uh, the, the eviction was stayed by COVID. It's like the judge decided they're evicted, right? You they couldn't enter the there. order because of COVID, right? So, but someday soon, like in six months, we're going to have to come up with, with a new building. You know, maybe you guys can support that because we need something for the pot movement, something for the counterculture. Yeah. Something like the Yippie Museum. Yeah. Got it, number nine bleaker. That's right. We gotta bring back number nine bleaker, but then you're gonna have to get rid of the guy with the box of sweets. That's okay, you can feed him up. Anyway, my name is Dana Beal. I'm, I'm known in society in general as the, the pot guy, but in the pot movement, I'm known as the Ivory guy. 